All right, so in this video, we're gonna be analyzing and interpreting X and Y intercepts in real world situations, okay? So let's scroll on down here to number two. We got a real world problem here. Uh, your checking account has a balance of $1,200 in it at the beginning of the year. Each month, you're allowed to spend $100, okay? An equation that models the situation is y equals 1200 minus 100x, where y represents the money in the account after each month, okay, in dollars, and x represents the month, uh, each month that has passed, okay? So x is months and y is dollars, okay? Um, so I kind of rearranged that equation just to y equals negative 100x plus 1200. You don't have to do that. Uh, but um, in the very near future, we're going to learn this is called slope-intercept form, and I wanted you to start to get comfortable with that now, okay? So we want to write that in standard form. Remember, standard form is AX plus BY equals C, okay? So I've got to move the X term to get on the same side with the Y, okay? It's negative 100 on the right side, so it becomes positive 100 on the left side, okay? So this is that equation in standard form, 100X plus Y equals 1200, okay? So now that we're in standard form, it's very easy to find the intercepts, the x-intercept and the y-intercept, okay? So first off, remember, to find the x-intercept, we're gonna set y equal to zero, and then we're gonna solve the resulting equation for x, okay? So we take our equation, let's plug in zero for y, so 100x plus zero equals 1200. Well, obviously, 100x plus zero is just 100x, Okay, now I'm going to divide both sides by 100, and x equals 12, okay? Remember, x corresponded with months that have passed. So that 12, we want to make sure we have units there, uh, represents 12 months, okay? Now let's find the y-intercept. So remember, to find the y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to 0, and then solve for y. So we go back to our equation here. Remember, 100x plus y equals 1,200. So we're gonna replace x with zero, all right? So that means zero plus y equals 1,200. So I just get y equals 1,200, all right? So in this case, remember, y represents dollars in the account, or the amount of money in the account in dollars. So we wanna make sure we have our units on our answer, and that would be $1,200, okay? So most important question here is, what do these values represent in the context of the problem, okay? So, first thing, this x-intercept at 12 months. Remember, that's when y equals 0, okay? Well, if y equals 0, that means there's 0 dollars in the account, all right? So, the x-intercept represents how long it takes to spend all of the money in the checking account. Okay, notice we weren't making any deposits. We were just spending $100 a month, okay? So, after 12 months, there will be a 0 balance, and that's what this value represents. After one year, the account will be empty. Okay, the y-intercept, remember, $1,200 at time zero, okay, that after zero months had passed, there was $1,200 in the account, so that's what that represents is the amount of money that was in the account at the beginning of the situation, okay? And that's one of the things you're gonna start to realize as we do more and more of these. The y-intercept usually means the beginning of a situation, okay, in a real-world context, all right? So the y-intercept represents the money in the account at the beginning of the situation, okay? So let's go graph this equation using the intercepts that we just calculated. Okay, so I went ahead and set up the grid here. Now notice we're only dealing with the first quadrant, okay? Uh, we're not going back in time, so I only need the x values to be positive. Uh, we're not going uh, to a negative balance. Uh, so I don't need the quadrant and down here, quadrant four, okay? So I've just got a grid for the first quadrant to help us graph this, okay? Now, with values um, that are a lot bigger, okay, we need to make sure our scale is appropriate. So uh, there are 12 grid lines on the vertical axis here, so that works out perfectly for this problem. So each of the grid lines going vertically is worth $100, okay? So my scale on the vertical axis is $100 per grid. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 400, 5, 6, 7, 800, 9, 10, 11, 1200. Okay. On the, uh, the horizontal here, we're going, we've got 12 grid lines there going to the right. 
and we've got 12 months that we're trying to get up to. So each of the grid lines would represent one month, okay? So you wanna make sure you're always consistent with your scale, okay? So the x-intercept I calculated was at 12, okay? The y-intercept I calculated was 1,200, okay? So the line is just gonna be the, you know, the connecting of those dots, all right? So you can see it's not the best straight line here. It's kind of hard to draw the, the line, but uh, we want to draw a straight line. Use your ruler if you got one at home uh, to draw that line. Okay, so that represents the situation. Again, we're not going to keep going up and to the left because that would mean we were in negative months. Okay, we're not going to keep going to the right because then our balance would be negative and we can't have that. Okay, so that's the graph of the problem in number two. All right, so continuing along here, we're on number three. So at the beginning of the school year, you have decided you're going to spend $50 on supplies, okay? You're only going to buy pens and notebooks, all right? So pens cost $2 each, and notebooks cost $5 each. The number of pens you buy is represented by the variable X, and the number of notebooks you buy is represented by the variable Y, okay? One equation that models this situation is Y equals negative two-fifths X plus 10, okay? So, first thing I want to do is write this in standard form, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the common denominator 5, okay, to get that process started, okay? Like we did in one of our previous videos. All right, so I'm going to use the distributive property here on the right side, okay? On the left side, 5 times y is just going to be 5y, okay? When I distribute here, notice the 5s are going to cancel out, and I'm left with just this negative 2x. So that's why this is negative 2x. And then I've got to distribute the last part here. 5 times 10 is 50. Okay? So now we want to write that in standard form. So I'm going to move the x over to the left side. It becomes positive. So 2x plus 5y equals 50. Okay? All right. So now once we're in standard form, again, finding the intercepts is very easy. So to find the x-intercept, we're going to replace y with 0 and then solve the equation that's left over for x, okay? So we want to set y equal to 0, okay? So this is going to go away. So you can tell by looking, I've got 2x equals 50. So x equals 25. And again, remember, x was the pens. And that should make sense, right? If the pens are $2 each and I have $50, I should be able to buy 25 pens. But that would mean getting zero notebooks, okay? Zero notebooks. All right, to find the y-intercept, we're gonna set x equal to zero. So this is kind of like if we were buying zero pens, how many notebooks could we buy? All right, so I'm gonna replace x with zero. So again, this goes away. I'm left with a real simple equation, 5y equals 50. Okay, and then divide both sides by five, and I get y equals 10 notebooks. So if I bought zero pens, I could buy 10 notebooks, okay? Obviously, it wouldn't be ideal just to buy 25 pens because what are you going to write on? It wouldn't be ideal to buy 10 notebooks and no pens because you're not going to have anything to write with, okay? So there's going to be somewhere in between there that's going to be ideal for the individual shopper, okay? But again, this is how many pens you could buy with no notebooks. This is how many notebooks you could buy with no pens, and that's what these represent in the context of the problem, okay? All right, so now let's go to the graph. We've got our intercepts. Now we can graph the equation and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so graphing this equation, 2x plus 5y equals 50, okay, once we got it into standard form, all right, we were able to find the, uh, the intercepts, okay? So remember, the x value represented pins, the y value represented notebooks, okay? We want to make sure our scale is good for the problem and consistent. So on the vertical axis, each grid line was worth one. Okay, I only need to get up to 10, uh, so I didn't need to stretch that out any. With the pins, I had to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so every two grid lines, I had worth five pins. Okay, so each grid line would be worth two and a half. All right, uh, and I needed to get up to 25 here. Okay, you can make the scale whatever you want to. You just don't want to go too far past what the intercepts would be in each example, okay? So, my x-intercept was down here at 25, so we've got a point there, okay? 
my y-intercept was 10 notebooks. So we put a point there, okay? Again, we don't want to go into the second quadrant over here where x is negative because you can't buy negative pins, okay? And if we keep going down and to the right here, it would mean you were buying negative notebooks, okay? So that's why we're dealing only with the first quadrant, okay? So we just want to connect the dots here. Okay, that's a better line than the previous one. Um, so this graph represents the situation where you've got $50 to buy supplies, you're only buying pens and notebooks, okay? Any point along that line would give you a combination of pens and notebooks that you could buy, okay? Again, obviously you have to buy a whole number of pens and notebooks, okay? But that graph represents the situation.